Welcome back. It's a new month, which means it's time to pick a new book for our band book club. And of course, we have our friends Matt Rodriguez and Courtney Hall from Chicago today with us. Hi, Jess. Hi. Hey, guys. And Kwani Lunas from The Hunt today in Boston. Hi. Thanks for having me. Of course. And joining me in studio to reveal this month's band book club pick is the immediate past president of the American Library Association, Lessa Kanani Opua Palayo Lozada. Lessa, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait. Uh, neither can we. So tell us about this month's pick. Yeah. So this month we are discussing Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women That a Movement Forgot by Mickey Kendall. Okay. And so this book's premise is essentially that the modern feminist movement is not actually for all women. Hmm. It is not necessarily for women of color, especially black women. It is not for trans women. But how can we make it so that the feminist movement is for all of us? Well, you know what our question is going to be. <laughs> yeah. Same question we have every month. Why was this book banned? So this book has been banned or challenged twice, once in 2021 and once in 2020. And it was is challenged because of its dealing with race. I think what's most noticeable about one of the challenges for this book is that it was part of a Texas official's 890 book, obscene book roundup, that they wanted all of those 890 books removed from libraries, from schools across the state, and included some of your favorite titles like The Great Gatsby and The Bluest Eye and almost a lot of books that you can think of. Olympia Rodrigo recently recommended this book to her fans and she highlighted the fact that it deals with intersectional feminism. What more can you tell us about that? So love Olivia Rodrigo and all of the work that she is doing to highlight important issues like intersectional feminism, which sprouts out of the work done by Kimberly Crenshaw, who coined the term intersectionality in 1989, that talks about the way our identities work together to change and inform the ways that the world views us based on who we are, myself as a mixed race native Hawaiian woman born and raised in California and not Hawaii, um, but also changes how the world views us. And so how that applies to intersectional feminism in this book is that we as women and especially black women and women of color are not just dealing with being women in society. We are dealing with being women and talking about hunger and poverty and voting rights and reproduction productive rights and how society views us and how we should look and how our bodies should be and how we should mm -hmm. talk. And these are all topics that Kendall talks about in hood feminism in ways that we need to understand that our intersectionalities inform every aspect of our lives and every aspect of our lives are actually a feminist issue and have to be part of the movement. Yeah. So even though it's been banned, this book was included on the Feminist Task Force's annual book list for young readers. So why is it so important for the younger generation to be reading a book like this? That Rise book list is amazing. It has books for kids from preschool all the way up through high school. And this book was recommended for ninth grade and up because we have to start talking about these topics as early as possible in order to develop empathy, in order to develop awareness, and just to have our kids understand the world that they are growing up in, that it's not just the small little corner that they have in their house, but they're going to go out into this great, big, wonderful world, and they need to be able to understand all of the different people who make it up. So love the ALA's Feminist Task Force's work. Rise has been going for over 20 years and has an annual book list. Amazing. Well, Lessa, thank you so much. And you can head to your local library today to pick up a copy and read along with us. Then you can join us at the end of the month for a live discussion on the American Library Association's Facebook group. And remember, free people read freely.